So today we're going to be talking about the Northern Research Group. For those of you who may not remember the Northern Research Group, let me give you a quick refresher. As you may remember, we often talk about all these different factions that exist in the Conservative Party. Like I say, you've got, well, the Northern Research Group, who we'll be talking about in a bit, and a bit more in detail, so we'll mention them. You have the uh, ERG, the European Research Group. You have the Net Zero Scrutiny Group, the Common Sense Group, the COVID Recovery Group, the One Nation Tory Group. There's a new um, grouping apparently led by Lee Anderson and co as well. So there are plenty of other groupings in the Conservative Party. And this is what has really brought the party to its knees. The fact that you have all these different groups fighting like, like you know, cats in a bag trying to establish dominance, it has destroyed the one's functioning unity of the party. And that is a good thing, by the way. That is that is fantastic to watch and, and, and see that. But you have a, a, a situation now, just to, just to show you how bad this situation is getting. You've got the Northern Research Group. Now, for those of you who may remember, the Northern Research Group is essentially um, the intake of the 2019 uh, Tory Red Wall MPs who have gotten together and said, look, we are going to group together and we are going to be the ones who make sure we fulfill you know, Boris Johnson's legacy. We are going to hold him to account and make sure that levelling up really happens. And also... Let's not be like the Tories, you know. <laughs> you know, we're we're you know, we might be conservatives, but we're not Tories. <laughs> and of course, as time has, has gone past, you may remember we've done a lot of things covering these people. Uh, Jake Berry, uh, the leader, of course, of the Northern Research Group, you know, infamously said, you know, we might be members of the Conservative Party, but we're not Tories. <laughs> and of course their big rallying cry in 2019 was we are going to level up we're going to make sure leveling up happens and this is what is going to happen leveling up leveling up we are all about leveling up but of course what happened the conservatives didn't deliver on leveling up they've absolutely failed to do so every area that voted in a conservative mp especially on like the promises to voting so for getting that extra money knows that that hasn't been delivered on so going forward their whole reason for existing their whole reason for restanding becomes incredibly credibly weak so they are desperately desperately looking around to try and get anything they can anything they can to try and justify their re-election, especially to their constituents. And as we said at the beginning, just to see, just to say how bad this, this fracturing has gone, at one point there used to be two big Tory conferences. You had the big one, um, of course, in, in September. That was the, the big national one. And then you sort of got one, a more a lot more smaller one in the summer. And now there are there are so many Tory conferences <laughs> happening, and it's all the all the reason of these different groups all having their own conferences, all you know, bringing their their followers to to speak at their conference. And just in Doncaster, just that's happened today. You've had the Northern Research Group conference, and who was their headline speaker? None other than George Osborne, and he had two very interesting things to say. Uh, which we'll go into in a moment, but <laughs> they are incredibly interesting if if he thinks that this is going to be sort of attractive to sort of, you know, future voters. But to say that Osborne was your star attraction going to try and get, you know, people who might be, pers or at least were persuaded in 2019 to, to vote uh, for it, Bring the headline star, the man most responsible for taking money out of these areas. That was not a good move. Optics-wise, that was an 
awful move. <laughs> that was a terrible move from them. But anyway, what did George Osborne have to say? Because I, I think this is this is quite interesting. So um he had this to say. So speaking at the Northern Research Group conference in Doncaster, he had this to say. He said, Whitehall is very against devolution as an orthodoxy. There are some conservatives who blame the blob, the civil servants, and the establishment. And we've been in office since 2010. We're in charge of our country's destiny. And we should stop blaming others if we don't get things right. That's interesting. That is entirely interesting because we have seen that there has been this new uh, cycle of blame happening because obviously they also used to blame the EU. They could get away with blaming the EU all they wanted. That was the reason why the UK wasn't doing well. And of course, now their new target, as we have we said just a couple of weeks ago now, um, it's the civil servants. It's the blob. It's the establishment. But now you've got George Osborne saying, no, don't be idiots. You're the ones who are in charge of the country. If you don't get things right, don't blame others. And I, I will I will give George Osborne this. I will absolutely give him this. He is absolutely right, 100%, to call his fellow conservatives out to stop them blaming the civil servants. So I've always said, give credit where credit is due. And I'll give credit to George Osborne for telling the Tories, you know, or at least you know this section of the Northern Research Group, don't blame, don't blame the civil servants because you're in charge, not them. So I'll give him that. But <laughs> this is this is where it gets uh, a bit weird. <coughs> so someone asked him a question about what would happen uh, if you sort of, in you know, go with this more devolution. What would happen if central government had to step in to sort of bail out these uh, devolved local authorities? Because that would obviously, you know, cause problems. You know, we've seen a couple of councils uh, go into uh, administration uh, very recently. The central government will have to step in. So it is assumed that, you know, the central government will also have to step in there as well. So we have this to say in it. He said, but if you take that attitude... You will also not let other parts of the country take responsibility for their own future. And I think the Conservatives can afford to approach this by being much more ambitious on devolution. We should now be looking as we fire up Northern Powerhouse 2.0 to give more power to local elected bodies, including Metro mayors. So, first of all, a couple of things here. First of all, George Osborne now massively in favor of of devolution that seems to come out completely of left field um and then uh, you know announcing a northern powerhouse 2.0 well your first northern powerhouse wasn't really a success <laughs> because you didn't follow through on it you didn't give it the funding it needed to succeed. In fact, the only real thing, or at least tangible result, I have ever really seen of the Northern Powerhouse was that Leeds train station got a new uh, exit, or entrance and exit. And other than that, that was the grand success of, of the Northern Powerhouse. So the fact that you're going to start the Northern Powerhouse 2.0, I can only speculate about what sort of grand improvement one railway station somewhere in the north might suddenly get <laughs> it's it's hardly a ringing endorsement of northern powerhouse 2.0 based on your previous successes but if you want the northern powerhouse 2.0 to be about more about giving more power to local elected bodies and more power to metro mayors then yeah that's fine go for it like I say, at the moment, the only really conservative metro mayor is Ben Houchin, and he seems to be completely, absolutely screwing up there with the Freeport, especially as it's the flagship Freeport as well, might I add. So Houchin's, so we say, future is very, very much in doubt on that. And you may get, uh, as, as a lot of people have said, a hilarious uh, side effects, maybe, that you've got the conservatives in power 
but all the regional metro mayors are all labor controlled and, and again that is down to the to the voting system I, I don't know if george osborne would actually um make arguments or at least pro arguments for for sort of changing the voting system towards pr to make it more fair I don't know where he really stands on that. He, he didn't really comment on that. But hey, if he's for more power and more devolution, well, PR would be an excellent way to sort of help along, help that get along as well. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but <laughs> wow. Bizarre comments from George Osborne. And like I say, optics wise, not really the best guy to bring along uh, to the northern powerhouse to the uh well the 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 northern research group when especially those voters would say that george osborne is probably the most man responsible for the current woes because he was in charge of austerity remember boris was or at least they voted for boris to end austerity to get money into their area and of course that hasn't happened and instead they are now flailing rapidly trying to find what they can use to to sort of ju to re-justify or at least justify them getting re-elected next time to go to the to go to their electorate so all is not well with the uh, northern research group and of course uh, sooner or later i think they will reach a desperation point and i have to wonder at what point they will turn on their party because if there was a group who i most of the suspected would be the ones to really turn on the party really viciously, and especially if they lose their seats the next election, it's going to be that group. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And again, links down below to my Patreon page, the one donation link called Buy Me Coffee, the YouTube thank you button, and the Pony Club all down below as well. So, as always, thank you very much for watching, and of course, we'll see you all next time.